Hello everyone, Adbar here. This is going to be my solo walkthrough and guide to the level 8 quest, The Faithful Departed, on Elite Difficulty. Enjoy. Hi everyone, Warjack here. The quest giver is located in House Fiharlan inside of the Goldwing Inn. As soon as you step out of the inn, you go in a straight line. You can go behind behind the Fiharlan chapter house. This is very close to where you can go to Tango Gorge. This guy over here will send you to like a prequest. Kind of similar to Vaughn 3. This little area you just have to run to the entrance of the quest. Um, there's an option over here to kill a few drow. Usually people don't spend extra time. I'm going to do it for the sake of, you know, completionist. But if you want to see, I'm just going to start right now by showing the shortest route and the way that most people go. And uh, that's, I would recommend you taking this route also. I'm just saying that there's other options though. Here I'm going to take a left and go up, but first I'm going to clear out some more drow. Just so I can get that extra objective. Anyway, so basically, in short, you jump down, take a left, stick to the left and go up, and then you cross this bridge. And that should take you to the end. Right over here is the entrance to the quest. I'm just going to get sidetracked and show you the other route and why it's not preferable, I guess. See, if you go off to the right, you get to this part where there's no bridge. There's like this gap. Now, you can jump it if you've got some kind of a long jump. But most players don't. And that's why everybody just goes to the left. Also, there's a nice area over here that just never, get ex never gets explored. Because, well, there's no incentive to do it. It's only like a few dots of XP. That you get from the explorer and killing extra monsters. I mean, you're seeing stuff here that I bet most players have never seen. And I would guess you've never seen it either, because basically nobody explores this area. Well, for what that's worth, I hope you just got to see something new. Yeah, that's the bridge that we are supposed to go over. Anyways, enough messing around, let's get into the quest. Okay, the summary of what we're supposed to do in this quest is we have these venerated, or basically mummies, who you need to protect. The sweet aroma of exotic fruit fills the air, but the peaceful mood is shattered by the sounds of... And what's going to happen is they're going to be in a room There'll be one venerated, and he'll be surrounded by Drow and by uh, by Scarrow, and they're gonna try to kill him. And it's your job to prevent them from killing him. Now, to make it even harder, as long as there's enemies in the room that are still alive, the the venerated will be vulnerable. Not only will he be vulnerable, he'll try to attack you also. I mean, he's just asking to die. It's really, really easy to inadvertently kill them. So, if you're doing this as a caster, evocation caster, and you're doing, using something like fireball, you're done. There's no chance you're going to do it without killing him. But if you use other spells, like a dot, and you target all the monsters in the room individually, then it's super easy. 
Here I've got a bit of a compromise. I'm using a melee player who focuses on using cleaves and attacks that attack everything around them. So here are my challenge is to try to hit everything but not hit the venerator. And you'll see that as soon as I get to it. Meanwhile, I'm just going for the usual, cleaning out all the rooms, all the breakables, all the mobs. Here the first intersection, there's these switches you need to pull on the two side rooms. Also, this quest has a few traps in it. I don't know how deadly they are. I always do this with a character who's got evasion, so I can't tell you if they're very dangerous or not. That was the second switch. Now the door at the bottom of the stairs is open. Luckily, the venerated are inside of these closed doors, like in small rooms. Everyone, all of them except for the last one. That means that as long as you don't enter the room you're okay and only when you enter the room does the encounter start so at least that you've got a bit of an edge also you don't have to save all of them um i'm trying to go to save all of them but as long as you leave i think at least one you're okay so even if you're terrible at this if you save if you survive at least one you should be fine I mean, sorry, if at least one of them survives, you should be fine. This zombie over here has the same mechanic as the venerated, but he's not important for the quest. Anyways, here we go. So, if you noticed already, in the center of the room, you can see he's red named. It says the venerated, and he's running after me. So, what I'm going to do is keep on running and leaving him always in a safe distance away from me when I attack. Basically, I'm always trying to make sure I face him. I always see where he is and make sure that I never swing my weapon when he gets too close. As long as I hit everything like once, I should get the aggro. They'll all come after me and I'll just chip away at them. So as long as I see where he is, and I know he's out of range, I don't have to worry. Anyways, that's it. That's the Albar method of protecting the venerated. It's more like the Albar method for avoiding hitting things when using cleave.
splintering wood and dying drought dissipate. Here we need the cell key to keep on down the hallway. I believe this room is optional. I'm gonna do it anyways, of course, for kills and breakables, etc. And so you can enjoy seeing the entire map. Okay, here this gate needs the silver key we picked up from the room where the scorpions are. These traps are a bit annoying because the trap box is after the trap. But they're all on the staircase so you have the high ground and you can jump over the trap. Something like that. Books of prayer and other There's an optional over here, and basically, what you need to do is read what's on that pedestal, or basically, click on it. There you go. Not often do you see a shrine room that has breakables or enemies. It's one of those rare cases. Of course, when taking a break, I would like to ask you to please hit like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it very much. Thank you. These blade traps are a bit annoying, can't jump over them, like the force traps. And again, the trap box is after the trap. Basically, even if you're a trapper, you still have to go through the trap. I believe you can time it though. Don't quote me on that.
Here we're looking for two switches. So let's keep on going. They're gonna be hidden inside of these little rooms off to the side. Some of these rooms they'll have venerated. You'll see which ones they are because they have doors on them also. But when you look on the map, you can't tell which room is what. It's just a bunch of hallways with these square rooms going off the edges. Anyways, this is the second switch. What those switches officially did is open up this hallway to this venerated at the end of the hall. Like I mentioned before, he's behind the door. So you don't have to like rush there or something. It's only once you get to the door and open it, you're in trouble. Well, only then does the encounter start. Again, just like before, I'm always trying to face the venerated and make sure I don't hit while I'm facing him. That way I always know where he is and what distance he is from me. And I can avoid avoid hitting him and making him take damage. Whoops. Yeah, I really don't want him to go through that blade that whatever I guess, blade barrier. There we go, save the second one also. I mentioned before, I don't think you need more than like one. You saved one, you're fine. Okay, this section of hallways is basically shaped like a big number eight. That means you can't cover all of them in one line. You'll have to repeat some of it. So if you see me run down a hallway, and then double back this. I'm just trying to open up the map and get all the monsters to spawn. These scorpions only come out of the ground when you get close to their, lo their spawning location. So if you want everything to spawn, you're going to have to walk down all the hallways. Here I'm just completing the bottom part of this number 8. Here's another venerated, again behind locked doors. Again, I hit everything who's not close to the venerated so I get its aggro. And once he starts moving towards me, I make sure I get keep a safe distance. Here you somehow managed to get their aggro off of me. That's, well, very not good. Of 
Well, that was close. He was basically down to like a sliver of health. Luckily, he didn't die. And that's it, we've completed the entire eight shape. Now we're gonna go to the end. This last venerated is not inside of like one of these small rooms behind a locked door, but he's inside of like a big open arena. And there's traps and way more monsters. So if you failed every one before, chances are you're gonna definitely fail this one and fail the whole quest. I would recommend making sure you got at least one of the first ones and not hoping that, yeah, I'll leave this one for last and I'll get him. As soon as you jump down, I believe that the encounter starts. So right now he's already probably taking damage. Probably should have hurried. And there's tons and tons of monsters. We got a yellow dungeon alert just from the monsters in this room. Again, the strategy is going to be exactly the same. See where he is? I know he's all the way at the back over there and just focus on everything right in front of me. If you really wanted to clean out this entire room before I kill all the monsters, because as soon as I do, I'll end the quest. But, on the other hand, I'll be risking failing the quest if he dies. Anyways, I've killed the important monsters, so I can no longer... Well, everything I'm killing now is already after the thought. But, for a second completionist, I'm going to go through it anyways. Just because I've got that itch to do it. Also, if you note down over here there's these dart traps so if you decide you want to pull them down here that's not good either because chances are that you'll get hit by them and probably die also all these breakables i'm doing now are not necessary for conquest so as you'll see soon in the scorecard i got the maximum breakables without breaking all these things i'm just doing it for the fun yeah, basically that's it. Here you go. See, if you look at the scorecard. I got already Conquest. Plus the 30 for traps and the 10% for Vandal bonus, so I'm good. Anyways, this is one of those free-to-play quests that many players hate because they fail it many times. They come in used to blasting everything, don't have a good strategy, and end up killing the venerated and failing the quest. So, I hope I gave you a good strategy that you can implement also. And I wish you lots of success trying it out. I don't think it's too hard. Give it a shot. I think you should succeed. Even if you don't make it flawlessly, as long as a few survive, you'll be fine. Anyways, if you've benefited from this guide, or if you've enjoyed this walkthrough, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit like and subscribe. Thank you. Now you might want to check out some of the other videos I made. See you there. Aldbar out.